Hello? <laughs> I don't know if this is working. I really hope it is. Um, hi guys in the chat. Can anyone, can anyone hear me? Can anyone see me? Can anyone see a puzzle? Hey Clover, I just saw you. Oh, <laughs> everyone's going hi. You can hear me. Oh, that's, that's good. And can you see the puzzle or not? Gosh, the chat's going absolutely bananas. Gosh, I, there's some people here. I can see everything's flicking past very, very quickly. Um, but I can't quite um, see. I'm, oh, Mark's, Mark's texting me. It's working. Oh, that's a relief. Excellent. How exciting. <laughs> you want a guitar intro? No, no, no. I might do a guitar outro if I manage to finish the puzzle. A long way to Tipperary. Thank you so much. Gosh, that flew past. It's it's crazy. So many comments. I I I'd just like to say I am um I'm quite nervous about this. Um We've had a few emails about this puzzle that suggest it is an absolute beast. Um, so I do not know how long this stream will last. Um, there's a few possibilities, I guess. It could be a, a very, very long stream. It could actually be quite a short stream. If I just can't do it at all, uh, um, I'll appeal to you guys to help me. But it might be that you know it's just a disaster and if that's the case I I do apologize but just be please be kind to me <laughs> Adam thank you very much first time catching the live stream um, Melissa thank you very much Esteban thank you very much this is a, I do feel like this is a bit of a brave stream <laughs> If you don't get it, we will consider Mark the better solver. No problem. Mark's a much better solver than me. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Hello from Puerto Rico. Hello from North Carolina. One of my favourite places. I have been to Pinehurst and spent a very happy week there. I'm trying to see if there's definitely some names I recognise from the earlier streams and from... Um, and from the um, uh, from the world of Sudoku, there are some people in 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 chat that I recognise. Will we ever re release a Steam app that has different types of Sudoku? Um, maybe we're working on an app at the moment that basically will be a base app because of the trouble we had with um, with Google. We're going to have a base app that includes a couple of puzzles of each variety. And then, um, and then you can basically buy extra packs of puzzles off the back of that. So, oh, good grief, this chat is going past so quickly. Checkmate, thank you so much. If I miss anybody, I'm really sorry. Sonalita. I have many world-class setters in the audience already. Oh, <laughs> great. I wondered whether Fistemafel himself might even join this stream. It's not impossible uh, that the great man will be here. Pullman Poppins. Anne, Cryptos Unite. Good luck. Thank you, Anne. Amos. Thank you so much, Amos. I love seeing where all the different people have come from. Hello, no pressure. Geo, best of luck. <laughs> There's no need to apologise. We're entertained no matter what. Oh, I'm not, well, I'm not sure you'd find it entertaining if I just sit here stuck for three hours. <laughs> I I saw in the chat yesterday that somebody was getting up really early in the morning to watch this, and I felt very bad. Tequila at the ready every time Simon says bobbins. That could be that could be a bad night. Checkmate. Bobbins, bobbins, bobbins. <laughs> Get on with it, says Stuart Douglas 19. <laughs> I think this is going to be a long night, Stuart, so uh, you'll forgive me if I just have a quick look at the chat before I kick off. 
Hello from Iran. Amazing. You're predicting 1 hour 15. I would take that. I would snatch your hand off, Rach, for 1 hour 15. Belfast. Hey, Weecock. How are you? Penguin F. Is that pe is Penguin F codec? Might be. Um, good grief. Anyway, right. Let's let's do the Sonic person. Very good setter. I've just seen your name. Right. Anyway, I'm putting off the inevitable. You're rooting for Fist and the Fell Re Reza. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gosh, I'm really nervous. Simon, you have an extraordinary brain, so we have faith. Mm. Well, I hope it's working tonight. <laughs> Hashtag team Fist and Fell. Ranks, Kai Ranks, how are you? Um, right, okay, I'm going to have a look. I apologise, um, I'm, I'm obviously going to be concentrating. I'm going to do this as much as I can like a normal edition of Cracking the Cryptic, so I won't be able to uh, follow the chat. Angel Wedge, the puzzle looks amazing. I need to be working soon. I hope you can stick around and see the first thing that jumped out at me. Sally, thank you so much. Ruben. CTC has rapidly become my favourite channel on YouTube and it's super exciting to finally catch a live stream. So tech, good luck. Right, okay, here we go. Philip Newman, oh thank you so much Philip. The number of the <laughs> Sudoku devil upside down. <laughs> Peanut bud. Personally I find it a massive ego, bust if I see a ego boost if I see something you miss. Well, you may well get that opportunity. Kevin Thompson. You're in with the Bobbins drinking game and Mr. Muss Addict. Please ignore the chat unless you get stuck. I'd hate for us to spoil an epiphany. No, I, I'm going to ignore the chat. Zachariah, would you uh, and Mark mind if I use versions of you as code crackers in a story of mine? Gosh, I wouldn't mind. Um, right, okay, here we go. Where is the puzzle? Let me find it. Here. So as I'm clicking around, I hope that you can see me clicking around uh, as well. So why don't we start with the rules? <sighs> right, let's get cracking. Lighthouse by Fistima Fell. Um, every digit from one to nine must appear once in every row, column, and region. Each region must be determined, and each is a set of nine orthogonally connected cells. Okay, so it's an irregular Sudoku disguised as something. Thanks, Juicy. Um, okay, a digit in a circle indicates the number of borders between regions. Oh, Mark's sorry, I'm gonna have to stop because Mark's telling me to tweet and I've forgotten to do that. I should just tweet. I apologize, it will, it'll be very quick. Copy, tweet. <laughs> we are. We are live. Oh, and could I just make a quick appeal? If if you do enjoy this sort of thing, could you like the stream? That seems to make a difference to what happens to the stream in terms of how well it goes. Um, that would be magnificent if you could do that. Um, okay, now I've got to go back to the chat again. Okay, there we go, I've done the tweet. Yes, over 2,000 people watching me solve a Sudoku live. This is mad. Okay, so can everyone, um, everyone can see me moving around the screen. I hope that's true. Um, can I share a puzzle link too, please? Oh, um, yes, I can. Of course I can. Sorry, I was just trying to think about how I could do that. But of course I can do that. I can just t uh, put it in there and paste it. Um, that should work, I think. Please increase the volume. <laughs> I don't know if I can increase the volume. I think I've got to go for it. People said it was okay. I trust them. Oh, you can see it. Great. Okay, so we've got this final bit of the rules we've got to read. A digit in a circle indicates the number of borders between regions it sees in its row and column. Note that the edge of the grid does not count towards this total. 
not all possible circles are necessarily given. So I read these rules earlier on as well, and I, they are very, very odd. A digit in a circle indicates the number of borders between regions it sees in its row and column. A digit in a circle indicates the number of borders between regions it sees in its row and column. Right, okay, so, um, and you might, you might have to forgive me here, I think I really am going to have to concentrate on this, so I'm going to have to totally ignore the chat, I feel very guilty about this, because I know some of you are super chatting, but I, um, if you just bear with me for a moment, I will try and go back over the super chats, maybe, you know, if I get somewhere we have a pause or something, but let me just think about this for a few moments. We've got a nine in the top left corner. This must be what we have to think about. So this is telling us that there are nine borders in the row and column. There are nine borders. So unfortunately, <laughs> my brain is telling me that that is telling me almost nothing about the puzzle because I think I can see that that is an impossible shape. If, if this was a region, then there would be no borders in row one, and there would be a maximum, presumably, of eight borders in column one because well because the borders act a bit like telegraph poles so if there are nine gaps you can only put eight eight telegraph poles between the gaps one two three four five six seven eight see i don't even trust my own brain here um so what does that mean so it means this isn't a strip so what is it? Is it the opposite of a strip? That would be the most opposite thing I could make. So is it that? Now if it's that, we're saying that this is a count of nine borders. We're definitely seeing so it's always going to see one border from itself in both directions because wherever this nine clue ends it will have a border between it and the next region and wherever in in the row and in the column it will have the same thing so two of its borders are used up by itself and there are seven more borders to find But that seems incredibly easy to do. Seven more borders. I mean, I'm just going to play around with some things here. So if we had, I don't know, something like this, something like that, we can make some pretty pictures. This nine is now seeing one, two, three borders. But we can just, you know, we can just increase this. We can do that instead of the blue and up the border count. Now I'm seeing four borders and I can just keep doing this. And I've got to somehow think about it in the context of the column as well. This is just nonsense, isn't it? This is absolute nonsense what I'm doing here. Uh, let's get rid of all those. What on earth are you meant to do with this? We've got three givens that are not in a circle. I struggle to believe that they are doing anything. So maybe it's something else. Maybe it's like these three circles or these two circles. Maybe if circles are adjacent. So if you've got you've got adjacent circles you're being told that 
because the adjacent circles must see the same number of borders in their row. Th these three here must see the same number of borders in their row. So, so they must have different number of borders in each column. Which, that feels weird. So, so this has to have a different number of borders to this, which in turn has to have a different number of borders to that. Wow, okay. Okay, I don't really understand what that's telling me, I have to say. This is not going very well. This is not going very well. I'm desperately trying not to look at the chat either. I don't want to know whether you're all going. It's obvious. Um, so. Oh dear, oh dear. So we've got... It must be the nine. It just must be the nine, mustn't it? There must be something you can do with the nine that I'm not appreciating. Um, oh, and by the way, Mark, if you're watching, because I'm not reading the chat, if there is a problem with volume or anything, can you just text me so that I know? Um, there is a... There's a nine... There are nine... borders... So, so hang on a minute, if there was, maybe go back to the telegraph pole idea again then. So if there's, if there's, if there's a strip, imagine, imagine there's no Sudoku, right? Imagine there's just a line here. So there's a line and this is the whole Sudoku. And then, if this if this wasn't a nine, but it was a one, if that was a one, it would be saying that this this sees two different regions. Yeah, actually, that's 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 important, isn't it? That's important. So if this is if this, imagine there's no Sudoku, the whole Sudoku is just row one of the grid, and we're just, we're making this a one. In that case, that one is, this one, ah, yeah, okay, the one is not telling us. So is this saying that this sees 10 different regions? Because if that was a one in a string like that, then we would see two regions because there would be a border somewhere and the other side of that border would be a different region. So a one here indicates two regions. A two, we'd add another one. That's indicating three regions. Right, this feel, that feels that feels like it does matter actually because that means in now let's imagine we look, we extend our string. So we imagine that that dog leg I've just drawn is a big long string of 17 digits. And there's a nine, there's a nine somewhere along it in a circle. Then that's telling us, That's telling us that along that string, that complete string, there are 10 regions delineated, or 10. But there are only nine regions in a Sudoku. Is that right? So is this telling me that there's somehow 
somehow, some way, I have to reduce the 10 regions that must exist along this perimeter. I must reduce that count somehow. I, well, uh, to put that a different way. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. If I imagine it as a string again, I can't connect regions to each other because it's just a string. But if I if I introduce an x and a y axis, then I can connect regions to each other. So this is telling me, I think I'm starting to get my head around this. I think what this is telling me is this nine clue is telling me that there are 10 regions in, in the boundary, but there can't be 10 regions in the Sudoku. So somehow, some way, I have to connect stuff that appears in the row. I have to connect a region or more than one region that appears in the row with a region or more than one region that appears in the column. So hang on, that feels like that's... So if I go back to my 3x3 three three example, if we had a 3x3 three three here, the 9 itself... The, yeah, the 9 itself can't alter the count, can it? So it has... Yeah, OK, so there has to be... Doesn't it have to be the first region that is seen... I can see that sort of thing is possible, for example. That would connect a region in the row to a region in the column. I could do that. I could do that with one region. And that would reduce the regions that are seen by the 9 to exactly 9. But could I do it with two regions? Because that is nine cells, although that won't work. Because I haven't actually filled in nine green cells. So... Hmm. So... This fellow, you are just evil. You are so evil. I mean, how can you come up with this sort of nonsense? I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, this sees 10 different regions. At least one region in row 1 must therefore be eliminated, or it must, it must connect to a region this 9 also sees, because I must reduce the number of regions in the Sudoku to a sensible number, which is 9. The problem is I could have a region down here. That could be a region. And then I'd have to connect two regions. But I don't know if that's possible. It doesn't look possible to do that, because if I grow... Yeah, this is really tricky. I'm going to have to, I think, think about different ways of doing this. So if if the 9 didn't look like that, let's imagine the 9 looked like this for a moment. If the 9 looks like this, and I've got to get rid of... I've got to get rid of a read. I've got to connect a region around the 9. So I can do that like that. I don't know how many... That's That's 9. That would work. But then there's no way that that's going to be 9 as well. That's got to be more than 9. That's 10. So the only way I can connect two regions is if it's possible to reduce what looks to me like a 10 region here to a 9 count. And surely, surely the most efficient shape I could draw for the nine region. If I wanted to maximize the opportunity for the second region to connect, the second region in row one to connect to the second region in column one, 
I'd have to do the most efficient way I could do that I reckon is with that shape that allows the green region to be um, well it allows that to be seven cells but then you've got the, the challenge where how do you complete the green region and still allow that region to exist and you can't I don't think you can do that I'm going to assert that's impossible because wherever I add a green cell I'm adding one to the count and I've got to add two green cells so so if that's right if that's right that's well if that's right that doesn't exist that does not exist um, because the nine in the top left given I can't connect more than one region in row one to a region that also is seen by the nine in column one given that I cannot do that the nine sees all nine regions of the Sudoku it's just that one of the regions it sees here it also sees here and that means that means that every every cell in the grid is part of a region that connects to either row one or column one and that means that that cell is suddenly interesting I have no idea if this is what people are thinking about or not but whatever this is whatever shape it is it must see all nine regions of the Sudoku in those cells so how does th so that is a string it's either a vertical string because this needs to connect I hope hopefully this is clear to everybody I don't want to look at the chat in case there's something in there that I see and it, it spoils anything but um, because every region in this puzzle has at least one cell in row one and column one this must connect to either row one or column one and it can't be more than nine cells there are nine cells in a column of a stoku and nine cells in a row of a stoku these are the knowledge bombs we get to share on cracking the cryptic so this square i think has to be either a string like that or a string like that uh, that is what i'm saying now <laughs> what if anything does that mean um, I don't know is the short answer so if that's if it goes horizontal to there the next cell that's interesting is this cell because this cell then has to get to an edge as well so this one either probably goes up or it, it could so you could have a sequence of like either horizontal or vertical strips which would appeal to me mightily because that would feel like it could actually be solvable oh no no ah no you can't do that right that is interesting look hang on a moment ah oh, this is just oh, this is ridiculously beautiful i'm not sure what it means but it's beautiful hang on a second let me just think about this well no let me tell you let me tell you what i've noticed so um 
let's get rid of that just for a second. Now, this cell has to connect either via a horizontal string or a vertical string, because we know it must hit one of the regions that exists in row one or column one, and the only cell it could see in a nine cell region is going to be one of those extreme cells. So let's imagine that this is a vert uh, sorry, horizontal strip of nine cells. Now, question, what happens to this cell? Now, I was thinking that this could do that. So, because this has to get to an edge as well, so it can just about get to that in nine cells. But this is wrong, because those two circles would have the same number in them. That must be right. That must be right, because they don't see a border in their row. So the only borders they see are in their column, and they share the column. So, this is not right. But, look, 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 look what Fistemafel has done. We looked at these earlier, but not with this in mind. So now get rid of this and imagine instead this is a vertical swipe up there. Now this cell is the inch, it's the most extreme cell we've got to deal with. Now if this doesn't go horizontally, it must go vertical like this. And that gives us the same problem, but up here, not down here anymore, up here. So that means, that means that this is not right. So that means if this does go vertical, if this does go vertical, no, if this goes vertical, this could not do that. So this has to get to the edge of the grid without being able to go to row one of the grid. So it has to go to column one of the grid. Yes, OK, which means it has to run along the bottom of the grid. And I say that because if it didn't run along the bottom of the grid and we tried to connect it to some other cell in this column without taking this cell. So let's imagine we're going to try and connect this to the edge of the grid without taking this cell. We could try and do it like that, but there is simply no way you can fit a nine cell region along the bottom. You're going to pen in some region of size less than nine. So that means if this is vertical, this is horizontal and goes all the way to the end of the grid. And that logic must be symmetrical, he says, because that's what he feels, but that's not perhaps. No, that must be symmetrically true. That must be symmetrically true, i.e. if this is not correct, then this must be correct and this cell becomes the interesting one. We know it can't go horizontally. It has to go vertically because it cannot connect in to row one in anything other than this position. Once it takes this position, it can't wiggle because you would never get the ni another nine cell region. Um, you know, if, if you're going to try and claim that this could be part of a different region, it can't be a nine cell region. So that's never going to work. So once once we conclude this is in, the whole column is in. So, so what does that mean? So that means that either it's this or it's the other way round. Now, can we tell which of those is correct? So let's just take a stare at this. So if this was correct, this digit would be, it would see one border, vertical, one vertical border. So that would be a one. And this hmm. um, I don't know what that would be. <laughs> that that one is going to depend on the row, which we don't know anything about. In fact, we don't know anything about any rows, do we? Or any any columns other than this one. But if it's the other way round, you presumably you still get a one in the corner, do you? You don't get a three in the corner, so I'm not singing. Ha ha ha. But I think you always get a one here. Because if this is vertical and that is horizontal, this sees this still sees one border. Yeah, okay. So I get a digit. Ta da! <laughs> um I don't how long has that taken me? Oh my goodness, I'm not even I don't even dare. I've just looked, is that thirty five minutes or something for one digit? Sorry. Um and I'm not actually sure this digit does anything very much for us. It tells us that 
these 17 cells are just made up of two regions. So they're just made up of two regions, which, well, and, and the second region, whichever is the second region, so say it's the horizontal one, that's the second region, the small region, that still has to take another cell as well. So I don't know how we're going to determine where that goes, but it could look like any of these type things. Or it could, of course, be up here and be like that. So that feels like an awful lot of... I mean, it's beautiful logic. It's beautiful logic. But what's it actually doing for us? Is it telling us something about the nine? <laughs> if it is, it's very hard to understand what it's telling us. Um... I don't know, I'm not sure. I feel like we've got to now. Yeah, we can't use these. These are just, although I've colored them in this sort of, well, with a binary option, um, we just don't know anything about this column or this column. Even, th even this row from this position Let's see, it's impacted by the nine. Oh, I see. So maybe I've got to. It, ah, hang on a minute. Hang on a moment. This digit is interesting, isn't it? That digit cannot be the... Well, <laughs> here is a statement of the bleeding obvious. Simon Anthony, specialist subject, bleeding obvious. Um, that cannot be a 9. So it has to be some number less than 9. But it, it has the same count as 9 in the row. So, this digit here sees a different number of regions to the 9 region. And that means that there must be regions in this puzzle that exist entirely within those two columns. Well, a region or regions. Uh, regions is almost very difficult because I know that that region definitely doesn't exist entirely in column 1 and column 2. And that only leaves, well, it doesn't leave enough cells. So that only leaves behind it 16 cells. In two complete regions, there are... In two complete regions, there are obviously 18 cells. So does that mean that has to be an 8? Or is that a step too far? Hmm. I feel like that's true. So, and I really, I'm very sorry if I'm taking this too slowly for some of you. I am conscious of the fact that <laughs> I could be probably going faster, but I am far from au fait with this logic I have to say this is very strange to me it doesn't well I think Fiston in his introduction wrote the the logic felt alien to him and that's exactly what I'm feeling now so this if if that's a seven this has the same count in the row so it sees the same borders as the nine in the row so it would have to see two less regions than the nine C's. That does not feel to me like it's possible at all. Um, 
Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm going to put a little 8 in there. I think that's probably an 8, but I, I'm not 100% convinced about it. So, question 2 is, do we know what shape this is part of? Is this part of the 9 shape? So have we got that sort of pattern? This is the pattern I keep coming back to. I think this is going to be correct because it, it's the most natural one for me to be able to border it. But if that's correct, hang on, hang on a minute. If that's correct, I have got to, I've now got to put, I've got to put an entire region into those cells which is possible, but only just possible. Um, if, that, if that's an 8, Oh, no, it's not possible. Once I've bounded it, it's not possible. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, once I bound that with something else, I've only got eight cells left. Ooh. Yeah, the pro well, okay, that's true. That is true. But... But, of course, there is no guarantee that this nine is a three by three. I've also got to be a bit careful about just meeting the criteria of having nine borders. Because if, I mean, I can already see this is getting very cramped down here. So, for example, if, this, if, this, if that was nine cells, I know it's not nine cells, but if it was nine cells, this nine would see one, two, three borders in its column, and it would still have to see six borders in its row, which is seven different regions. And that's impossible because we've already gone to here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's only six borders possible left. So this is nonsense. I am tempted to say that this cannot possibly be in the nine region. Let me just play around with this for a moment. Let me just play around with this for a moment. So our challenge is Oh, I know what we could do. So I was thinking, if we go further along the top, if we did something like that for the 9 region, now when we bound it with the 8 region, or the region that's coming around the edge, 1, 2, 3, which is a size 8, now when we bound it like this, we've got more room here to lock a region in, Oh, but the problem with that, <laughs> so it's, you're like, you're, you're in a corset, because what you've pushed in there, or what you've let expand here along the top, you've given yourself a bigger problem down the side. Yeah, that's really interesting, because if, if it was squeezing itself out this way, I'm really reducing the number of regions I can create along the top of the grid. Uh, so in this situation, I've reduced it to one, two, three, four, a maximum of five different regions, which is four borders, which means I have to have five borders down here, which means I have to have six regions down there. Yet, I've got ten cells here that have to be the same cut. Well, n nine of which have to be the same color. So even if I do that, I'm nowhere near. This is nowhere close to being the right number of regions, is it? So even if I, do, if, I, if I do that, I've got one, two, three, four, five regions, which is four borders. So I have four borders that way. And how many did I say this way? Um, one border, two border, four borders that way. No, it's not enough. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, 
doesn't work. I don't think there's any way that this cell here is part of this 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 nine region. Um, because I think any way we do this, we are we're either rendering this gap too small to fit a nine cell region into it, or by pushing ourselves out this way along the top of the grid, we're reducing the number of regions we can have in row one too catastrophically. Let me just think about this again. So actually, maybe if I switched, ah, maybe that's more efficient in terms of trying to preserve borderage in the top row. So it's not as efficient for the green. The green now uses up an extra digit to come in here. It still works. So that's a nine cell region. Yeah, but I've still got here with only having seen one border. This doesn't work, does it? So now I've got one border here, two borders, three borders, four borders along the along the row, which means I have to have five borders or six different colours in the column. One, one here, or well, six different colours. One, two, three, four, five. There's no way you can do it. And if I try and take less cells here. I can't fit nine cells into the, this. The, I mean, I've already minimized this by putting four in. I can't put less than four in. If I put less than four in, I can only have eight cells in, in, in that gap. So I'm doing this very slowly and methodically, but I think this is true, isn't it? This square here is not... Well, get rid of all this. This cell here, this cell is purple. I want that to be purple. I think this cell is a different color to purple. And I think that, well, that frees everything up. That frees everything. Right, well, no, it doesn't free up this to become a seven because there's still not enough space. There's not enough space there for two complete regions. But now I've got 16 cells free in which to locate um, 16 cells free in which to locate nine of the same number, n nine of the same region, in order to allow this to be an eight, which I, th I think I'm pretty convinced it is. <sighs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, can you imagine? Can you imagine just setting this? Can anybody imagine just set, setting this? I mean, <laughs> oh, is Fist, Fistimafel hasn't made an appearance, is, has he? I just, if, if people can say yes or no, if Fistimafel has made an appearance, I would love to know. Um, okay, so what have we now learned? We have now learned that this cell is a different color to this one. Ah, right. So, I'm just going to see if anybody's put uh, no. I think people are saying no. Okay, cool. Um, so, now, now we have the question. So, I, either, either the nine region is the region that is kept into columns one and two or or the nine region is not and must sneak out and then there's another region that must be in columns one and two now that strikes me as very unlikely for this reason if this nine does enters column three ever anywhere it adds two borders to the eight to the eight clue doesn't it if i put eight in there i'm pr very prepared to take this out but we know that this number is less than nine and we know that because we can't put 10 into a sudoku thank goodness because imagine if in this puzzle you could have higher digits that would be horrible but this square here if If 
if this nine ever enters column three, let's just draw a shape. Let's just draw that shape just for the sake of thinking about it with something very clear to analyze. You can see that this is a border and this is a border. But the borders that the nine contributes to itself is only one border, which is this border. So by entering column three, we increase the count of the eight. We, 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 we increase it in a way it, it needs to be lower. The count of the eight needs to be below the nine. I know this is a self-evidently obvious thing to say, but the count of the eight, the eight needs to see less regions than the nine, and certainly less borders than the nine, both the same thing, but you, you know what I mean? It has got to see less borders than the nine. By letting the nine come out into column three, the eight sees more borders at this point than the nine. So I now have to reduce the number of borders that the nine, well, the eight sees by two more. So I've got to put two complete regions into those cells. That is nonsense. You cannot do that. That definitely feels like that's right. Um, let me just, I'm just going to pause there. Just let me think about that for a second. It feels very, that feels very sound. If the nine ever creeps into column three, however it does it, it must have two borders. It doesn't matter whether it's a big long stripe, it's still got two borders and it's only contributing one border to itself. So the eight at this point, if, if we just consider the nine and the eight regions together, and even add in the bottom region, the eight is ahead of the nine in terms of borders. But the eight needs overall to be less than the nine, so I have to reduce the nine by two, or sorry, increase the nine by two, so I have, I have to be two more borders, the nine sees, now than the eight sees, and you can't do that. You just can't do it, because I've got to put I've got to put too many regions into this little shape. So that's wrong. So, okay, so now we, now the nine region is the region that stays in the first two columns. Okay, but we don't know what it looks like. <laughs> the nine region lives in the first two columns of the grid. Um, <laughs> and that means, I haven't got a clue. That means what? Um, the nine region, and the nine, but the nine region also has to be bounded by the eight, doesn't it? So what it's not doing is going off a jaunt down the column like that. That will not work because I've got to get this eight into column one somehow to bound the nine, to ensure I correct the count, I rectify the count on the perimeter north and western sides. So this. I mean, it's going to be, I think it's going to be some sort of block like this with something sticking out of it. Um, so maybe this cell, is that cell have to be in the nine or not? If that cell's not in the nine, yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work, does it? So if that cell is something other than the nine, the nine would at best take those six, seven, eight, nine, because it can't come into column three. So that if if this is not part of the nine region, that is forced. And now we know we've got to connect something in row one to something in column one. And there is no way that's nine cells, is it? That must, no, that, I mean, self-evidently, that is not nine cells. It's a lot more. It's 12 cells. So that's complete nonsense. Right, okay, that's good. That's good. That gets us another color. This square here has got to be purple. Once this square is purple, these two squares must also be purple because we can't fit a nine cell region into that domino. So even if we allow it to grow, we will then give ourselves a very big problem. So these four are all purple. And now we are, we're not cooking with gas. We've got, we've got a flint 
and some kindling which is wet and was striking rapidly and not producing a flame because I'm totally inept at that but we have at least gathered the kindling so that I'm just wondering if we can pull the same trick with this eight that we pulled here because we're now also going to have to have we're going to have to have at least one region that's sort of bounded into all these cells which I don't know about I think this that feels a bit restricted um, hmm. okay so what does that mean What does that mean? The other thing we've got to be careful about now, now we've got four purples in column one. I can't have an undue number of purples or I'm going to struggle to meet my count of nine, aren't I? Yeah, actually, that's that is an interesting point. Ah, I was about to say something that it turns out would be wrong. I was about to say this can't be green, but I've just noticed it can be green. Um, I saw that super chat, Michelle. Thank you very much. Um, that at least makes me think that the chat isn't all saying I'm being completely daft. Um, yeah, no, I was about to say this couldn't be green, but I think it can be, actually. The moment this is green, though, you force the disposition of the purple. The purple has to do that because it can't come into column three. Well, no, well, actually, it could. No, that's not strictly true. It could it could come down like that, and this would be forced to be green as well. But I think that's 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 utterly ludicrous, isn't it? because now yeah you're, you're just extending the green shape in a way that's very unhelpful indeed so I think you could do that though and this would probably five six yes and it would work there you go so that is possible so this can unfortunately be green which is very annoying but if that is green that is also green yeah okay that's interesting that's interesting now so if that's not green if this is not green it's purple because we can't fit other nine cell regions in here and then bound it with with this region as well so if this is purple then the earliest the green can hit the column is here if this is not purple, this cell is still green. And that means, the reason I think that's interesting is that's an awful long way down the column. And that means that by the time you're scanning down here and you're counting borders in column one, by the time you get here, you have seen one border only. You don't know where it is. And perhaps it's possible. Well, no, this is the problem with this. This is all so tricky to articulate accurately because, of course, the green could probably be lower again. Two, three, four, five. But it doesn't affect the conclusion. Yeah, it could be lower again. Um, oh, no, that wouldn't work because that wouldn't be bounding nine cells. But anyway, I think the point is still interesting. The point is that whether this square is green or purple, this square would still have to be green in either case. And the reason that's interesting is that scanning down here to this point the absolute maximum number of borders we could have achieved in this puzzle is one. And that's going to be the place where the, the purple and the green border each other. Now, 
That means that in column one, the maximum number of borders we could ever put in column one would be involving three different colors in these three cells. So that would be five colors all together in the column, which is four borders using the telegraph poles. So now there must be there must be at least five borders in row one. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me just think about that. I'm just going to double check I agree with myself. <laughs> um, is that true? I think it is. I'm very comfortable that this by this square in column one, we can have, have achieved a maximum of one border. So that means I can add three more colors to that. I can I can max out this column at five colors, which is four borders. So I must have five five borders, six colors. I must have six different colors in row one. And by here, I've got a maximum of two colors. But Oh, so maybe that's why this is interesting. Is this somehow... Yeah, that must be difficult. That must be difficult. Goodness only knows how. <laughs> How we prove this to be true but it feels to me like we've got to include six different colors in row one the basic point I think is we've got to include six different colors in row one but we know that there is also a complete region in the first three rows of the grid somewhere and that can't be over here because this is where the green and the purple need to be bounding each other. Yeah, I mean, if that's if this square was part of a nine-cell region, then the green to, for the green to bind bound the purple, it couldn't bound this region as well. It would have to come in here, and there isn't enough space for the purple to exist. Yeah, I mean, even if I take this out, it just becomes nonsensical. You've, you'd have to come down here, loop out again, and somehow keep the count of the eight down to only nine while fencing in nine on the left. I mean, it's just not, hopefully it's clear it's nonsense, but let me, let me just show you why I think it's absolutely gibberish worthy. We could do something like this. Four, we've still got to add five more cells. The best we'll do is like that. And then we've got to close this off like that. And that's, this is about 300 cells, isn't it? Four, it's certainly more than nine. Um, so I don't think you can ever force the eight round there. So I'm tempted to say this has to be part of the eight, but I, that wasn't the point I was trying to think about. The point I was trying to think about is where is the region that differentiates this cell from this cell? Because this, it probably is only one region because I can't quite see how I'm going to get two regions into that area there. So. I think this probably has to be an eight. I'm going to put it in small because I'm not certain. But these two definitely have to be different numbers. This requires now, because these are going to have the same count from the column, these see the same number of borders in the column, it now requires us to have a complete region in these cells. And that region can't come over here because it's going to break the eight. So in fact, now we can say this region here this region of yellow cells, because we know this is a string coming down, we don't know whether, whether it joins to that or whether it's a string like that, but we know it's definitely not part of a nine cell region that only lives in the first three rows of the grid. So 
Now we know that the nine cell region must occupy nine of these 15 cells. At the same time, we have the requirement that we must have six different colors in row one. Oh, I might have broken this. Um, I think you can do it, but only just, only just. So, between the, we know this is two colors and this is a third color. So I have to have three colors in this strip while at the same time retaining the ability to have, I've got to have three colors in this strip, but, but whatever I put, whatever I put in here, must one of them must also be attached to a, a nine cell region. So yeah, okay, so how about this as logical? If you, can you ever, in the nine cell region that we're selecting from these cells, can you, can you ever take more than three cells in a row out of the yellow to occupy? So could I, could I make the region like, I don't know, like that, for example, when take four cells from row three. No way, no way. Because although I could then color these two, these three cells in two different colors, they can't create nine cell regions because they have to come out through one cell. That's nonsense. And that, that must be true, mustn't it? However I draw this, if I draw it like this, Again, I'm creating, I'm creating too narrow a gap to get two different regions to come out through. So, if you, if you can't take four, you must take either a three by three like this or some offset, offset three by three. And an offset three by three won't work because if you offset the three by threes, <laughs> you're, you're penning things in, in a very unhelpful way. You can't. So, so there is, I think, a three by three in this rectangle. I think that's true. Uh, let me just, if you don't mind, I'm just going to just play play around, um, play around with this for a second. I'm having a very quick look at the chat to see if everyone's complaining. Hopefully, hopefully you're not. Um, so let me just see whether if I put n no cells from the nine cell region. No, I mean, that's clearly nonsense. If I put no cells from the nine cell region in row one, then I always have to have five cells from one of these two rows and that will block off the ability for whatever I put in row one to ever escape. So that's complete nonsense. So I must have at least one cell in row one. If I do something like that, I can only get one thing out. We can't have four. No, it's not. Okay, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. There, somewhere in this is a three cell region. And this is, well, this is massive. This is massive because now Wherever the three cell region lives, let's say it was there. The other two. The other two. Have to be different colors in order to get me up to a count of six. One, two, this, this couldn't be yellow this would have to be gray or something one two three four five six yeah so so within within my funny region here there is a three by three and two different colors but that Hallelujah. 
and that means that means that this can't see it can't see more than six colors in the top row so it does see six colors because it needed to see six colors from the column once it sees six colors that's five borders exist in row one once there are five borders in row one every circle in row one must be a five or greater and there are one two three four five circles those squares are a five six seven triple And one of the, one of these has all yes yes and one of these has seen five exactly five borders exactly in its row because there are five different colours in row one and therefore it sees no borders in its column and is a string down the grid now that must be this one mustn't it because if I do that one if this is a string down the grid. It's enclosing a 6 and a 7. That's impossible. Because it just it just is. Um, you know, we need to... I mean, hopefully it's very clear that it's impossible. It just, uh, it just is impossible. If we try and do this, and now how are we going to possibly make two regions this well it just it just is impossible because this can't be part of a region that goes vertical either there are many reasons why this is impossible not least that one yeah the, these two strings of five digits are impossible because of all the logic we did at the start like that so this has to be the five and therefore <laughs> i get i'm just going to check on what i'm about to say is true i think it is i get my first region my first region is column nine column 9 exists in this puzzle as a region that means row 9 most of row 9 is an orange region now now that's interesting as well isn't it because yeah this is this is so beautiful how do you do this how fistemfell do you do this How do you how do you start from an idea like this and make a puzzle where the logic is this I mean it's mad but it's so clever it's so clever now now we can all I think we can do these as well because because of this orange um, string at the bottom that is a border that is seen by both of these digits so whichever one of these is a six, is comp its number of borders is completed by its row count, which is five borders, and its column count, which is the orange border, with whatever else exists in the column. So one of the, whichever one of these is a six, let's try and make it this one, because it isn't this one, I can tell you that, because that is therefore forced as a shape. This thing here. Uh, because in order to own it, it's going to, it sees this border. Uh, oh, well, actually, or it could be like that, but it still sees this border. So it's going to see the border with the orange as its sixth border, and it's penned in a shape over here that is not size nine. So that is wrong. So the six must not be here. That must be the seven. That must be the six. This region is coming down the grid. Thank you, Mason. <laughs> to commemorate the five five dollars sixty seven to commemorate the five six seven yes it was really seven six five though um but no thank you very much um now yes so this must be uh that that one we don't know about do we we don't know where the orange comes up but we do know that this must stretch down the grid um Maybe I'll make this. What colour should I make this? These are the decisions that really matter in life. I am going to make this region red. There, I've said it. Right. Now, this six may well come all the way to here, depending on where this orange picks up its 
its ninth digit from. Um, but the, ah, yeah, but there's well, actually, this is an interesting so tech. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, this cell here must be orange or red because there's only one border allowed. So it's the border of the red region and the orange region, which must now be either here. Oh my gosh, Sphere Rebellier. Sphere Rebellier, thank you so much. $76.50, that's extremely kind of you, thank you. Lee, thank you very much as well. Um, I'm quite excited about this because I feel like I've just made some sort of breakthrough. Now, Amos, thank you as well. Um, now, the seven. Now, the seven can only see two borders in its column, and it's definitely seeing a border with the orange, and it's seeing a border with the six, because the six has only got eight cells maximum in column eight, so it's sticking out. So the seven must be some sort of stripe coming downwards, I think. Um, so maybe I'll go to dark grey. The seven is some sort of stripe coming down. It sees it sees a border with orange. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it sees one border, one border with six. So what would happen if you did that? Nothing good would happen because now the seven would have to do, well, the seven is absolutely broken. It would have to do something like this and ring that. But there's two borders. A six here is contributing two borders to the column and it mustn't contribute two borders. It must only contribute one border. It must contribute the border that it shares with the orange so that you've only got two borders coming down column seven. And the six can only border the orange relatively low down in the column. Ah, but the orange doesn't have to go here. So the orange could come up to there and then the six could come up to here. Ah, you rotten thing. Oh, OK, but that's the that is the highest the six can be. So those squares are grey. But we don't know what's going on at the bottom here. These squares could be grey as well. That square, can that be can that be red? Absolutely it can be red, I think. Because, the, because there's no guarantee that the orange is contributing digits to one of these two places. I might be, might be getting confused about this. Let me just think about this. The orange needs an eighth cell. Is there any reason it's one of those two cells necessarily? Could it be that one? Or this one? I think it can. And if it was over here, this would have to come down to the bottom here. And then what's stopping it going there? Nothing. Okay, right. Okay, so I think... Okay, I don't know what this means, but this is... Well, this is very exciting. How long have I had? A long time. I'm very sorry. Um, but... Actually, that is a very long time. <laughs> that, that is a very long time. <laughs> because... Um, I'm thinking I've, I've got... No, I've, got, I've got a few digits in the grid. Um... Okay, so now what do we do? Have we learned enough to understand the puzzle? Can we say this is an eight, isn't it now? I think this is an eight because it sees everything the nine sees in its column. And the only thing it's prevented from seeing in its row is the yellow region. We're, oh, and this is a region now. This is what's left of my three by five rectangle. Now I've adulterated it with sevens and sixes. 
So this is a region. Okay, so we've got another region and it's a complete region. So this is an 8. And that's, let me just think about that. It's an 8. Do we know, we do, I suppose, know the count it's seeing in its column, don't we? Because we know that row 1 was seeing 6 colours. So it's seeing 5 borders in its row. So the 9 is seeing 4 borders in its column. So this, I think, is going to see 5 different colours in its row. It's seeing 1 purple. It's definitely going to see green. Wherever green comes out, it's seeing green. 1, 2. Oh, n oh no. No. Uh, can that come across there? Oh, I suppose green might be able to... Go. Can green really go... Um, well... Okay, I think it might be still okay, actually. I had a horrible thought that I couldn't keep this down to an 8 count. Beca and that's because I know it's seeing four borders in its column. So it must only see four borders in its row, which is a maximum of five colours in its row. Five regions in its row. Well, it's definitely seeing itself. It's definitely seeing green, so that's two colours. And these are three different colours, so that's its total colours already used up. But I've got to deal with these cells. So these cells here have to be colours that, that I've already counted in the purple, the green, the grey, the red and the blue. Well, the only thing these can therefore be is green and grey. Now, I think, though... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is possible that I can get the grey across there if I need to. It might be possible that I can get the green to come out a bit here. If I stack the 9, if I stack the 9 like that, let me just have a look at this and really pen in the green. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I could make that one green. I don't think I can make this one green. Let me just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I've I can't connect this up, so that doesn't work. Um, well, that's definitely an eight. There's no way this is bigger than eight. I don't think that these two can be anything other than grey. I'm not abs I'm not a million percent sure, so I will just leave that optionality in, I think. Um, oh, but I tell you what, surely these are green. Oh, I know. No, 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 no. This cell. That cell's now a writing, because that's opposite this one. And I've just said, I've just determined the count of the colours for this row as five. So there are four borders. One, two, three, four. So that squares a four. Thank you, Geo. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm still, I'm still a bit, that was a bit disconcerting, I have to say. Um, so now, okay. So now what do we do? Now we can say, I'm just thinking about how this green, this green has got to leave enough room for there to be purples here that sum to nine cells. So there's no way, I mean, if, the, if, the, if this wasn't green, for example, and was some other region, you're going to pen in, you're penning in the purple, that's nonsense. So these are all green. But that doesn't actually 
Does it tell us everything we need to know about the world or not? That's the next question that we're going to grapple with. Oh, now one thing I haven't thought about for a while is column one, where I now know for sure, because I've got five borders in this row, I've got to have four borders or five, co five colours in this column. Yes, so these are different colours. Ah, here we go, here we go, here's some more magic. So this square, I can make that blue actually because blue is fenced off on the right hand side. This has to be a different colour to this. And this has to be a different colour to that in order to me, me to get up to the right number of colours. Now yellow is boxed in so I'm going to make that one yellow. So these both have to grow so that's got to come out. That's got to come out too as a result of that. Okay. Now, now if this if this cell wasn't green, surely that's a problem, because then green would connect and not leave enough room for purple. So that square's green, which pushes out blue again, which pushes out yellow again. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry as well if I've missed people's super chats. I'm trying. I am trying to concentrate and I, f I feel very bad about that because I know if people make the effort to donate they deserve to be read out so I'm so sorry. Um, okay, I think I'm getting quite excited. <laughs> I feel like it's like, you know, it's like Lego. It's like technical Lego where you're building the motor and the motor's really, really complicated. And in the end, you get to a point where you might be able to fashion something that looks beautiful and is correct. Um, hmm. So. Now what do we do? Have we got any easy wins here? Like, yeah, I mean, that is that an easy win? Oh. Hang on, Mark's just texting me. Um, Mason, sent, Mason sent $4 to commemorate me getting a four. Thank you, Mason. And thanks, Kadir, as well. Um, thanks, Anya. Um, did I see Kurt Schneider in the chat as well? That wasn't Kurt Hugo Schneider, was it? If it was, I, ho oh, I hope it was. Um, Ben Woolbridge, thank you. Um, okay, how many people are watching? By the way, can I just can I just see that one second? Blimey, quite a few. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, okay. Amos, thank you very much. Um, Right, what do we do now? Oh yeah, I think I was looking at this square, wasn't I? Because I must, from the from the row, it's seeing one border. From the column, it's seeing, well, how, let's count the colours it's seeing. It's seeing one, two, three, four. And it's going to see purple, that's five. Five colours, four, so this should be a five, I think. Um, oh, Mark's going there. Oh. Um, and... Okay, it's all getting a bit tricky though to know exactly where to look next. I've got a feeling that hmm, I'm not sure. One, two, three, four. I've got to get nine cells into the purple. I've got to be very careful about this eight now as well. I really, I, d I don't like these green eights coming out this way. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no, yeah, okay. Well, n n you can see we've got a six count there. To connect these together, even if I do it as efficiently as I can, I need two more greens. And that's going to take my green count up to eight. 
so that I could have this one. There's no way I can have those two. That I am convinced about. Now that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't get to that square anymore with grey. Um, do we know? Oh, I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm not looking in the right place now as to where where the next easy win is going to be. What about this square or this square? Can we actually do anything with those? I don't really like the look of these columns though. Um <laughs> Mark's texting me as well. Um anyway, let me look at this square. So this square, I think I can get a correct count on the row, can't I? It sees purple, green, yellow, grey, red, and blue for certain. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's five borders. Ooh, five borders in its row, and it sees one, two. It's going to see blue. Because there's no way I can there's no way I can keep blue in here and make purple big enough. So hang on. If it's one, two, three, four, five, that's four in the the column. So is this a nine? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Five. That's five borders in the row. One, two, three, four, four borders in the column. That square there is a nine. Wow. Wow, that's another digit. Okay, and now now this one's suspicious to me because that that was all built off the fact I had so many colours in the row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So again, this is five borders horizontally. One, two, five borders. This and this one can't be nine. So I can see them. A maximum of four colors and I'm definitely seeing one two three I can only see one more color in this column oh so does that have to be yellow if it's blue there wouldn't be enough room for yellow okay I don't quite don't quite know how this is going to work, but I think some of these cells are going to have to be yellow. Possibly all of them. If it was all of them, that would be huge. But that's definitely an eight. There is no way you can. It's no because it's well. It's it's seeing eight, assuming there is one color. Well, it's assuming one more color color in the column. Um, now it would be very easy to have more than one more color. But it's not easy to only have one more colour. So this is definitely an 8. I'm almost wondering whether we're going to have to get into sort of Sudoku in order to finish off the patterns here. Oh, that digit's now forced. One, oh yeah, this is cool. Once this is a 9, and we know it's count horizontally, this square is going to be deducible, isn't it? Um, probably one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's it's seeing five. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no! 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 No. That has to be a five, I think. It sees a border this way. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's five borders this way. One, two. It's going to see blue. Three, four, five. So it's four borders. So that is a nine. If it's seeing five borders this way, it must be seeing four borders this way, but this one also sees that border. So that should be a five. That means this can't be a five. 
one, one horizontally, so it mustn't see four vertically. One, one, two, three, four. Oh, ah, that might be wrong. That might be wrong. Hang on, hang on, I'm getting tired now as well, which is not helpful. Um, one horizontally, one, one, two, three, four. It's definitely seeing purple, that's the fifth color. So it needs to see green again. Wow, that's horrible. That is so horrible, but it's true. It can see green again. So it's going to see purple somewhere and then it's going to see green again. And although I've already counted green here, that increases the count because there's a purple in its way. Okay, so actually that, that, I don't actually know what that is then. Because once the greens come in and sort of interlock with the purples, this could be a massive number. Ah, but the key thing, the key thing is that there is no way, I'm pretty sure it's not a nine, but, but anyway, I'm just, I'm just relieved. That, that cell, I think, hasn't broken, I think this cell hasn't broken the puzzle. Um, wow, thank goodness. Okay, so now can I get this digit? I feel like I must be able to get this digit. One, two, three, four, five. It's a count of four borders in the row because obviously I'm counting colors and then deducting one for the borders. So it's four borders in the row. Let's put that in. And in the column, it's definitely seeing green. It's not purple because we know purple's combined to, to column one and two can't see grey because grey can't get to this square. It definitely sees blue, it definitely sees yellow and it definitely sees orange. So that must be a count of four, which is three borders, which means this square is a seven. Right. Okay, and another digit goes in the grid. Um, so, where shall we look now? Where shall we look now? Um, Savola, thank you very much for the thumbs up. Um, I can feel my brain slowing down. Um, <laughs> can I have a drink of water? Am I allowed to have a drink of water? Let me just go have a drink of water. One second. Okay. Right. So I've got three circles left. And I sort of feel like it would be very nice. Oh. Ah, hang on. Hang on a minute. The green C6. But I know, I know now that there is a green overlapping with purple in this string of five cells in order to correct the count for this square. So, the green, green, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's a ninth one over here. And even if I take that square, ah, beautiful, beautiful. This square, this square now can't be, it can't be green. That is so beautiful. Look at this three, this given three. If this is green, I've locked purple into a nine cell region, but this count would be incorrect because I need to inter interlock a green with a purple in order to increase this one's count. So that square there is not green and is therefore purple. Now the green is forced round the edge of the green. And I think the green is, well, the, not the green is forced, but the shape of the green is forced. This is now forced in order to connect up. And I've got no latitude. I've used up eight of the cells and I need another one in this foursome now. So that square is not green. One, one two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I've now done, I've now done grey. That's no longer grey. 
So this was red after all. Um, yeah, and I've got to be careful. I've got to remember I, I worked out these counts very carefully, didn't I? This can't, ha yeah, we can't introduce new colours into column 7 because that's going to make this count incorrect. It needs to see a border with the 6 and it needs to see the 6 border with the orange at the bottom. So, so this square is now orange. So I've not got, hang on. Ah, yes. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. This, I said all these had to be the same colour. What are the options now for these squares? Oh, could one of them, no. Yeah, yes, I have got it. What, what are the options for these squares? Well, what they cannot be anymore is a red, because one of these two squares needs to be a red, and that will be the ninth red, and one of these two squares needs to be the orange, and that will be the ninth orange. So these squares have to either be blue or yellow, all of them. Now, if they're all blue, there is simply no way I can create, a, well, I, I could do that, but then the yellow shape would be not nine cells and the blue shape would be far more than nine cells. So all of those have to be yellow and connect to that and that's blue. And that is very nearly the shapes done. Now, now I can count this one, I think. I think this is all done. One, two, three, four, five, five colors so that's four borders in the column one two three four five six so that's five borders in a row that's a nine this one sees no borders in its column and one two uh, that's this is a bit weird isn't it one two three four i think this is four colors in its row so that's three borders so that's the border here wherever the border is between the orange and the red and then this border, so it is three borders, okay. And now I've just got to do this one and this one. Now this one sees how many colors in its row? One, two, three, four, so three borders that way. Three, why did I write four, Simon? Um, one, two, three, four. Oh, for goodness sake. For goodness sake, look what he's done here. <laughs> this is so, <laughs> how do you do this? <laughs> After two hours or whatever it is gonna be. <laughs> this is such a beautiful cell because this is determining the shape of the green. Because look, this has already reached a three board account from its horizontal section. So it's got to, it's got, it's limited in terms of the number of colors it can see in the column. And it's limited by this nine. So this can be a maximum of eight, which means it can see a maximum of six different colors in the column. Well, it's for one, two, three, it's immediately reaching a count of five just by doing that. So this tells us that if we were to introduce a green in any of these three cells, where we know there must be a green for the count to be corrected for this one, you're going to get two more borders from that. You get two more borders, which means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rectify the count for borders goes down to six, six plus three is nine, clashes, not possible. So how do we, how do we remedy this? Well, we can remedy it by using the edge of the grid, which doesn't count in the counts, for this one. And if we put the last green here and put those in, I think we keep this down to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, reduced to five borders. Five plus three is eight, and that's just working. So that becomes eight, and now we can just get a count on this one, whatever it's gonna be. It's obviously 
uh, less than eight. Um, so this one sees one horizontally, one, two, three, four, five, six. So rectify down to five, add the one. It's very easy to make a mistake here. That's a six. And there we go. Oh no, we don't. I've still not done this. Um, and when I say there we go, I will say that, that all that means is that now I've got to do an irregular Sudoku. But I do feel like, a, you know, if I sit here till kingdom come, in the end, I should be able to do an irregular Sudoku. So... Um, how do I resolve this? <laughs> I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure I can. I probably can. I just don't see how to do it. I'm going to have a look at irregular Sudoku. And what digits have we got a lot of? We've got a lot of digits which are eights and we've got a lot of digits that are nines. And we've got some weird shapes going on. Um, oh yeah, okay. I can put another digit in the grid in column four. Where does eight go in column four? Not in any of those cells, so that's an eight. Let's double click the eights and see if we can go further with those. I've got to put, yes I can, I've got to put an eight in this column as well. That can only go at the bottom. So now I've got six, six eights now. I've just got the final three eights in columns seven, eight, and nine to do. Uh, hmm. Oh, Kyle, that's really kind of you. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your six and eight. <laughs> yes, these sixes and eights. Actually, six and eight are my lucky numbers. So I'm, um, yeah, that's sort of very fitting. Um, Eight's more of a lucky number than six, but they both really are. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm not actually seeing how to do much more with eights. We do anything with nines. Ooh. Uh, I don't actually, <laughs> when I double click them, <laughs> I don't actually like that look very much. Marcelo, thank you so much. Um, of course, there's always a possibility here as well that I've made an error. What a horrible thought that is. Oh, imagine if this is wrong. It could still be wrong. Eric, thank you. Um, okay. Come on, Simon, concentrate. Let, there must be easy things we can do here. We can... Yeah, okay, I can put nine in column two, I think. This nine is very interesting, because it actually rules a nine out of five cells in the column. That nine takes care of that one, and there's only one cell left, so we get another nine. Wow, wow, RJ Aquino. Congrats on getting nearly the whole grid coloured. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for that generous donation as well. Goodness me. Um, okay. I just got a nine. Can we do more with nines? How many nines have we got? We've got four, but we need to put a nine in the... Ooh. Where does the nine go in that? Co oh, the nine can go in two places in that column. That's very mean of it. Okay, nine is being mean. Ah, but nine in column six isn't being mean. This nine takes care of those. This nine takes care of those. So nine can only go at the bottom. So nines might be the new eights. Let's see if we can keep that going. answer seems to be no. <laughs> um, the thing about Fistum Fell as well is that this could be this could be monstrous. I shouldn't have made the joke about Kingdom Come. I could still be here for some hours trying to do this. Um, 
So let's think about what can we think about in terms of the normal rules of irregular Sudoku. We need to think about innies and outies, don't we? Have we got anything good going on in that respect? The answer seems to be no. <laughs> um, Oh, come on, Simon. There must be something we can do here. There's a weird thing going on in these cells, I've just noticed. If you look, think about the first three columns of the grid, they obviously contain three sets of the digits 1 to 9. Now, we know that is one set of the digits 1 to 9. That is a second set of the digits 1 to 9. So this is sort of a hidden region. I mean, this is like box seven actually exists in this puzzle, um, which is sort of interesting, isn't it? And you can see, in fact, that the two in this region has to therefore be in one of those three cells. So the two in the green is now, is now in one of two places. It's in either of those cells. Thank you, Ashkan. Um, so the two in green has become restricted. The seven must be in one of those three. I'm not sure if this is sensible, actually, to pencil mark across boxes like this. Uh, that's probably not sensible. So seven now in the purple is in one of two places, I believe. Knowledge bomb. Some people here have not clicked like. Fry Jeremy, thank you for the donation. You're right, they haven't. Please do if you can. Really appreciate it. Um, okay. So, is that a useful? Oh, okay. Let's let's come back to simpler things. Where does one go? in the orange region? And the answer is, I don't know, but it's in one of those two squares because it must be the last orange digit. Yeah, okay, and now I'm going to use um, sort of grid division stuff. Uh, if you divide the grid along this line where the cursor's moving, we know that uh, these three cells will have to be exactly the same digits as whichever of the three orange cells out of this foursome. Um, now one of those digits is therefore going to have to be a two, which means, and we know that that two is in orange, so it's not the digit that's the one, so there is a two in one of those cells, which means that square is not a two. which um, pick your nose for good luck does that does that give you good luck <laughs> um, no I'm not going to do that um, there are some lengths even I won't go to to solve a puzzle um, two three four seven Ah, okay, so maybe can we keep going with that logic then? If we look at the bottom row, these squares are 2, 3, 4, and 7, just, just looking at the gaps. But we know there's a 2 in one of those squares. Now, whichever... What we do know is that whichever digit here is not 2 has to go in these two digits. So along with a 1, actually, there must be a 1 in those squares as well, of course. Because again, all I'm doing there is comparing these three cells with whatever is poking into the final three columns of the grid from orange. We know that whatever whatever orange gives to the final three columns, grey must take away. So we know there's a 1 in orange, that must be in one of those. We know there's a 2 in grey, so that must be in one of those. Now 4 and 7, look, can't go in there because there's already a 7 and a 4 in the row. So I think we can remove, wow, JPTXS, 
Thank you so much. That's really very kind. Um, so this has now become a 2-3. So this is now a 1-2-3 triple. That feels like it might be important. Now I can get rid of the threes from here, look. Now I've got a 4-7 pair. I've got a 7 here. Right, so now we're doing Sudoku. 7 and 4 go into the grid. Those are not 7s. Um, two, three, four, five, six, and nine into these squares. Let's have a look at that, see if we can do anything with it. Five, six, and nine, that's not a six. That's not a nine. It's in the same region as a nine, and that one seems to be able to be anything. But I guess now I know what those squares are, don't I? So this is David, thank you for such an incredible one of a kind job by you live streaming this and spotting naked singles. <laughs> um, four, five, six, eight, and nine into these squares. I'm gonna I'm gonna good lift it. Four, five, six, eight, and nine into these squares here. Right, what can we get rid of? Eight, nine, nine. My phone's probably gonna buzz with Mark complaining. Right, so this is a one, two, three triple at the bottom. Um, and that's not a three. I've got a feeling we can we can resolve that somehow, but I can't see how to do it, which is very very annoying. Um, okay. <laughs> ah no. Okay, I was wondering about two in this region. Yes, yes, two in this region must be in. Well, in fact, it's in one of those two cells, isn't it? Therefore, it's looking at this cell, which must therefore be a 1. And that's beautiful, because that 1 is now... I can't put a 1 here as well. So this is the 1 that, it, that orange needs. So that finally, I think, becomes orange. Therefore, this must be red. That's not a 1 anymore. Thank you, B0110. Need a big clop hug. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would be very keen on a big clop hug. Um, right, I've, done, I've, I've now done the regions. I've done the regions. This is a. This feels like a very important moment. Um, one look has to be vertical in one of those cells. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Two in that box. No, I don't really like the look of that. Uh, this six is now oh that six has been looking at that all along has it sorry that's been there for ages that's appalling five nine six go into those squares so may, maybe this column I'm not sure one two four and seven ooh not sure that square there is a one, two. Oh, in fact, that's interesting. Maybe I should start with this row. Look, we've got some quite restricted squares. That can't be a two. Old gen gaming. Imagine actually having to do Sudoku in a Sudoku puzzle. Yeah, thank you so much for the generous donation. Monkey unit, insert witty comment. I've not got, I've not got anything, buddy. I've not got anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm just desperately trying to solve this puzzle. That can't be a one either because of the one that's up there. Oh, and the same is true of three. Fully coloured grid, Ron Johnson, you're quite right. There's a three up here, look. Looking at that, so that's become a four out of nowhere. Hooray. Um, okay. Maybe, oh yes, here we go. My funny little region down here has got a one and a three in it to be put in. Those squares have to go there, which means that square is now a two, and that square is now a five. This 1, 3 is looking at that little square, amongst others, which means that's now a 1, 3 pair. This square now has become a 2. 3 and 2 go into the grid. Come on. 4, 6 and 8. Along. No, no, come on. 4, 6 and 7. I'm getting tired. I can feel it. 4, 6 and 7. That's not 4. That's not 6. That one. 
don't know. Um, oh, but I suppose, actually, yes, where does the four go in this region? It's got to go there. So that's seven, that's six, that is a something, a seven. And that must be a five to complete the column. That's no longer a five. I mean, this, <laughs> I don't know. It's very hard to judge these things. And I'm obviously, you know, I've been at this now for over two hours, but this does not feel like a very easy, <laughs> irregular Sudoku. Um, okay, come on. Come on, use your brain, Simon. What else is going on here? I suppose I've got quite a few digits now there. So four, five, six, and nine. Oh, where does the nine go in this row? Yes, that's a, that's a good question. It goes there. So this is now four, five, and six into those squares. Four, five, and six. That's not five. That's not four. That one is not six. Bother. I'm desperate to look at the chat as well to find out whether... I've been slow or this has been entertaining in any way. Um, two, six, seven. Okay, let's look at column nine. We've got to put two, six, sevens and eights in. That's not a two or an eight. That one, don't know about. That one, don't know about. That one, I ah, don't know about. Bobbins. Um, Two is almost restricted there. One, two, three. One, two, three, six, seven. One, two. Ooh, okay. Ron Johnson. This is what you get for daring fist. I never dare. I never dare fist in the fell. We're dealing with a creature on a higher plane trust me this guy's brain is just ridiculous um and this puzzle actually is the proof if you know if you were in a court of law and the judge said well what's the charge i would say fist and fell is ridiculous and the judge would say hmm where's your evidence i would just put this down on the table and say there you go and i think when judged by a jury of his peers everybody would agree that fist and fell was a inhumanly brilliant and b um magnificently <laughs> odd <laughs> creative genius um anyway i'm just looking at this one two three six and seven now those squares i think can't be three and can't be two so they have to be one six and seven and that seems to create a weird triple in that row which I think might give me a seven in that cell which is very welcome which means that square is not a seven anymore now I've got one four and six into these squares which I don't know if I can do well uh, ah yeah I can that must be a four for exactly the same reason Sebastian not at all slow incredibly entertaining oh I doubt that but thank you very much um, I've got a 1-6 pair here, which gets me my 3 and my 1. Now that square must be a right in. That's got to be a 4. Just double checking, I think that is a 4. This 4 here is ruling itself out of this square. So what do I need still in this row then? I've not put 3... Oh, I've got this one. I've got my one six seven triple. I've not put one. I've not put three, five, and nine, have I? That's what's missing. So that square is a three or a five, and that square is a three, five, or nine, which is very annoying. I've done my virtual box over here. Oh, this column. Oh, that square is a one or a two, is it? That's annoying as well. It's still not done. It's definitely still not done. It's getting done, but it's not done yet. Oh, I tell you what's interesting. My 167 triple, the one is over there. Therefore, those are not ones. 
Therefore, that's a 2, 3 pair, and that's become a 1, and that's become a 2. Let's get rid of the three corner marks. If that's a 2, it's not doing anything for me, but still. Come on. Um, so this square must be a 1, 6, or a 7. Oh, this is so beautiful, the way this keeps, this box keeps doing magic, look. Because now I'll do the same trick again. Okay, so that, that this because this square can't be a 1 because the 1's there. It can't be a 7, so that's got to be a 6. And then that bounces back over here and here. It gives me a 1, 7 pair, so that becomes a 6. 6 can come out of the rest of this column, which I'm very pleased about. And 6 can come over here with 1s and 6s. This 1, no. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's something. There must... Ah, 6. Yes, 6 is resolving that one. 5, 4, 6... What are these squares then? These are 2, 4 and 7. Well, that's a 7. It sees 2 and 4. Oh, this is... Imagine if I've made an error. Imagine. Oh, God, I would absolutely cry. Okay. I did some digits there. Thank you, Lee. Um... That's not two. Seven, eight here, so that's become a two. Um, three, four, and eight. Ah. Is that true? Three, four, and eight? Because that seems to have to be a three. So that's no longer a three, which means that's a three. This should be a four or an eight. I can see it's still working, you know. It is still working. 8, 4. These squares are a 1, 5 pair, according to the redness of them. This 7, 8, that becomes a 5, that becomes a 9, that becomes an 8, that becomes a 5. 1, 1, 3. This becomes a 5. That becomes a 6. That becomes a 9. <laughs> the first comment I see is Simon's legendary scanning. Oh dear, has it been that bad? <laughs> I'm so sorry. If it's been really bad, I didn't... Um, I was trying to do okay. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. What a puzzle that is. How long's that taken me? Two hours, ten minutes. Well, that's the longest Sudoku I've ever solved. <laughs> that was so hard. What was going on at the start of that puzzle? Thank you very much for that donation. It flew past. Um, Russell, thank you. <laughs> um, goodness me. Goodness me. Oh, what a relief. Paul, thank you. Uh, oh, look, everything's going off. Apple, apple cider, thank you. Happy, so happy, happy. That's very generous. Thank you so much. Happy, happy Jew 666. $40, $45 for the secret. <laughs> Long way to Tipperary, thank you. What a puzzle. Let's just, let's just take a moment. Thank you very much, Anton. Um, for the rubles, thank you. Thank you, Asclepian Kane. Uh, Asclepian Kane. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hen. Thank you. Uh, oh gosh, it's 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 really going quickly. Hen Hen Greville. Thank you. Sean Blanford. Thank you. Baku. Thank you. Hunter. <laughs> thank you. Um, Oh goodness. Um dance one two one one. Technically sub two hours. 
open oh was it well i'm actually i'm not that unhappy with that it was it did feel quite difficult um thank you clemens thank you derek jc thank you savola thank you ron johnson again that's very kind of you thank you craig booth thank you stefan i mean let's just take a moment and think about what this because how do you come up with this I mean, this is not a normal rule set. This horrible thing about the number of borders it sees. But what a beautiful idea that you can just put a single digit in the corner. The nine in the corner tells you so much that's not... It tells you so much that's beautiful because you can... Um, oh, Mark's saying guitar outro. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd be even more nervous if I play my guitar. <laughs> Anya, thank you very much. It, I mean, but it's so, it's so redolent, this nine, because once you realise it's pointing you to ten different regions, it's actually telling you a lot about the structure of the geometry of the puzzle. Not enough, not nearly enough to sort of, <laughs> you know, allow you to start filling in digits or anything, but you start to get an idea for how you can start to put the regions together. Um, this is a beautiful idea, wasn't it? This, this, the juxtaposition of these two circles and these two circles is gorgeous in terms of forcing this perimeter shape to be just two colours. And then I might well have been a better way. I found it quite hard to prove that this digit was... Well, this digit is clearly important because it has to be lower than this digit. But proving what it meant in terms of how column one and column two are structured, I found very hard. And then I think this digit was the other very interesting. Very, that, this digit was fascinating because it, it forced a whole region into that shape, didn't it? And that became very problematic when trying to make sure you fulfilled the border requirements for column one and column nine. And that eventually leads you to the most beautiful, this, this 765 triple is quite remarkable. It's quite remarkable. And just, just step back for a moment and imagine, you, imagine somebody told you, this is the sort of puzzle I want you to make and this is what I want it to lead to, a 765 triple, you know, in this way. Now, I guess for 99.9% .9 of us out there, just doing that much would be incredibly difficult to do. But Fistelfell didn't just do that. He continued from there for about another, I don't know, another hour and 10 minutes of logical deduction upon logical deduction in order to actually, you know, finish this puzzle. And it's all so precise and so tight. The fact that this yellow had to finish in that way. The fact that these two digits, my favourite digits, forced this green to be on the edge of the grid. <laughs> it's just it's just nuts, isn't it? It's just absolutely nuts. You want me to play the guitar? I don't think you really do. Oh, <laughs> I get really nervous when I play the guitar. Patty, thank you very much. Oh, people are so, oh dear, I see all the guitars. Oh dear, okay. Okay, uh, what should I play? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where my capo is either. I want a capo if I'm going to play. Where's my capo gone? Um, oh, I don't know where it's gone actually. That's very annoying. <laughs> this is where everyone will tune out. Um,
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm really embarrassed now. <laughs> and I didn't have my capo, so it wasn't in the right key. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm really sorry it took me so long. Um, but I loved having your company. I loved having your support. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, yeah, the sounds of silence. <laughs> Good night, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>